welcome to Arts Talk. I'm Bill Roberts. I'm Jennifer Boudreau. How are you, Jennifer? I'm super great. How are you? Well, I'm excited because I want to hear, last show you were talking about that you were going for some rescue diving training or a rescue diving course. Yes. You're still here. I'm still here. And I didn't lose anybody, I don't think. But it was really, it was great. I did a full day of just a whole bunch of different rescues and tows and how to bring people up from underwater if they're unresponsive. So should anybody have a scuba diving accident while we're shooting the show, I can rescue them. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. so and it's good timing because I'm going on my dive trip with my dad that I do every year. And so hopefully I will not have to practice any of the skills while I'm out there. That's great. And as we've talked on previous episodes, you have a wedding coming up, which yes. is a destination wedding where there's probably water close yes. by. Yes, where so. I, will, I will be scuba diving the entire time, except for during the wedding, of course. And I had a busy month because I finished up the Edmonton Fringe Festival. How did the show go? It was awesome. We Sold had a, out? We had a sellout. We uh, had houses that were 60% more uh, full every, every show. So yeah. over 60% full, which was great. Um, so we had an, an awesome, awesome run. Oh, so good. I must say that I didn't get to see you perform, and I felt it was one of your best performances I've ever not seen you do. Thanks, Jennifer. I appreciate it. Any compliment I get from you is great. Guess what? Yeah. We have something new we want to bring to the yes, show. Yes, I'm really excited. So we want to engage our viewers. Mm -hmm. So we want to ask a question on each show, and we'd like our viewers to respond to our email address. So our very first question that we're going to ask is, what is your favorite Edmonton Arts Festival? And you can email your response, and we may read some of the responses on mm -hmm. our next show. So if you email your response to artstalkedmonton at gmail.com, and next show we'll uh, bring up some of the responses. So again, what's your favorite Edmonton Arts Festival? Send us your responses. What's yours? Mine's a fringe. Edmonton Fringe? Yeah. yeah there's Mine just so much different kinds of arts to see. And mine is the Fringe Festival as well. Before oh. we close off this segment too, I okay. just want everybody to know if they want to be on Arts Talk yes. and you want to get a hold of us, again, at that email address I just gave, artstalkedmonton at gmail.com. Email mm -hmm. us there if you're interested in being on the show or have any comments about the show. You can also check out our website, uh, artstalktv.com, and we're also on Twitter at Arts Talk uh, Edmonton. And that's EDM, Arts Talk EDM. All right, uh, my guest is Janice McDonald, a local author. Who, uh, author. who do you have coming up? I have our very own producer, Charlene Malang, and her partner, Daniel Foreman, for the Edmonton Short Film Festival. Excellent, we'll be right back after this. And welcome back to Arts Talk, I'm Bill Roberts. I have the pleasure now to interview a local author by the name of Janice McDonald. Welcome, Janice. Thank you. Pleasure having you on the set. I have a few interesting questions, but one that I have to start with when I was reading your bio is it tells me that you were born on the side of a mountain in Banff National Park? That used to be my party trick. <laughs> I was born in Canada, but not in a province or a territory. Where was I born? People always think I was in an airplane, but no, I was in a national park. And so were you actually born on the side of the mountain or were you actually born in the hospital? I was born in the hospital, which is on the side of a mountain. <laughs> my mother was a teacher in Banff. Yeah. Ah, nice. So. You've been writing for many years now, and what made you decide that this is a career that you wanted to pursue? Oh gosh, uh, I, I suppose uh, solitary uh, pleasures and not wanting to hang around with people too much. Um, I did a thesis on detective fiction, and at one point somebody said, so I suppose you're going to write a mystery novel now, and to my utter horror, I said, yeah, I suppose I am. And that's what started me off. And away you went. Yeah. <laughs> so the big series that you've been working on over the years has been, is called the Randy Craig Mystery Series. Is that correct? So how yes. many books in, the, in that series right now? Well, uh, as this airs, there will now be six books in the series uh, because I will be writing, uh, my seventh book will be coming out. Wow. It's, uh, uh, the first book came out with a different publisher, mm -hmm. and it went out of print, and Turnstone started up with Sticks and Stones, but people kept going, so I really want to read all of them, mm -hmm. and they couldn't get hold of the first book, which was called The Next Margaret, and I thought, my publisher said, well, we could bring it out as a print-on-demand or maybe an e-book, and it was very slender, because back at that time I was mm -hmm. a new writer and you write very slim novels because you don't want to bore anybody <laughs> and now I'm not afraid of it obviously. Right. Uh, so I decided instead of bringing out the book as a, a, an interesting artifact, I would revisit the mystery. 
So Randy is going to a 20 year reunion and all of the old ghosts reappear. Wow. So the first book, which was out of print, called The Next Margaret is now part of Another Margaret, which is coming out in September. So can you give us just kind of a brief synopsis then about who Randy Craig is and a little bit about the characters in, in the series? Randy Craig, short for Miranda Craig, is starts out as a graduate student going back to the University of Alberta to write a thesis on a great new Canadian mystery, or great new Canadian writer named uh, Margaret Allers and the only person who has written anything about her is at the University of Alberta. So that's what brings Randy to Edmonton in the first place. Mm -hmm. uh, she then begins to believe that her uh, thesis advisor may have murdered the person that she's writing about. Wow. And that's what starts her off. Uh, uh, Randy eventually gets her master's degree and becomes a sessional lecturer mm -hmm. and discovers poison pen letters and misogyny happening at the University of Alberta in Sticks and Stones and in the third book, The Monitor, she goes off to uh, Grant McEwen and teaches distance learning and is also working as a monitor in a chat room. <laughs> and you're starting to get the idea mm -hmm. that she hangs around to universities. That's the, the idea of a, a sort of academic mysteries. Mm -hmm. In the fourth novel, she's dealing with the Center of Ethnomusicology and the Folkways Collection at the University of Alberta and deals with the Folk Festival and all of the festivals in the summer. In Condemned to Repeat, she's working at Rutherford House, creating a virtual museum there. Wow. And in The Roar of the Crowd, she's got a uh, um, a grant to help work uh, a children's camp at the Shakespeare Festival. And there's a murder at the Shakespeare Festival and through into the Fringe Festival. Mm -hmm. Sounds like an exciting series to read. And the thing that I like about it is it's all local. So you've got yeah. you know all these different local, you know, U of A and Rutherford House, and, and that's really neat that you've, you've kept it all within in Edmonton. Yeah, um, people should read it. They might find a body in their backyard. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I'll check that. I better check the backyard when I get home. So, as you mentioned, you've got a brand new book coming out, which is a new addition to the series called Another Margaret, correct? Yes. And you've got a official launch party at Audrey's Books, which is located on 10702 Jasper Ave in Edmonton on Wednesday, September 23rd, beginning at 7 p.m. Yes, and uh, everybody's welcome. And everybody, be, so you'll be there doing a reading from the, the book? Uh, and book signing, and, book and signings. there'll be a bit of a party, and uh, with any luck, a very festive atmosphere. That's great. Um, so one, b before we end up uh, with closing off this interview, the one thing I like to ask some of my guests is, we have viewers that are aspiring writers any quick advice that you could give them? Marry somebody rich. <laughs> Good idea. So any things in regards to publishing, anything? Did you self-publish or you went through a publisher? I went through a publisher for all my books. Uh, I don't think I've got the stamina that it takes to be a self-published author. Right. Um, it takes an awful lot to do promotions and to get out there and get your books distributed. To, you know, there's still a lot to be said for traditional publishing. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. And just quickly, too, before we close out in the interview, wanted to mention uh, you have a new kids' book. Well, it's not so much a new kids' book, but coming out on October 31st or in that area of Halloween, The Ghoul's Night Out. Yes, um, it's a new edition. It's just a brand yeah. new edition, and you showed it to me a little bit earlier. <laughs> looks like a really fun book and a, and a cool book to read. Janice, I'd like to thank you for being on Arts Talk. Really appreciate you coming on and enlightening us about the Randy Craig Mystery Series. Thanks for having me. You bet. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back. Every show we like to talk about different mm -hmm. events that are coming up around our city and within the local area. Mm -hmm. So I have a couple of events, Jennifer, that I want to bring up. Uh, Alberta Culture Days, which is an Alberta-wide event, which takes place the weekend of September 26th and 27th. We have a big event happening out in Sherwood Park called Words in the Park, which is a really cool event. Clever. There's going to be probably about 31, 32 different authors there with tables displaying their latest books that they've got out. Local authors? Local authors. Oh, I didn't uh, there'll know we be, had so many. There, oh, there's a lot. Uh, they'll be doing readings as well from, from books. We'll have mm -hmm. six or seven uh, visual artists there displaying and we'll have probably a couple of interactives happening at this event. And the reason I say we is because it's also part of the Arts and Culture uh, Council of Strathcona County which I'm the nice. president of. Oh. So it is a big New event, runs Robin. from 10 to 4 County Hall in Sherwood Park in the big big room they have there called the Agora. 
Nice. Another event that I've got coming up, which is exciting, is the Edmonton Comedy Festival. It runs from October 7th to the 10th, right here in Edmonton. Comics from all over North America are coming. Oh, that sounds 30 hilarious. plus comics. What do you have, nice. Jennifer? Well, I just have two. So, as a bride myself, and being four months away from the wedding, uh, Bridal Fantasy is back on September 20th. So, all you other brides, make sure you get out there and check it out, too. And then I wanted to also bring up the Edmonton Short Film Festival, which we'll be discussing right away with Charlene and Daniel. That's September 26th. They'll have a workshop at 11.30 a.m. and then you'll get to see all of the fun short films that made it into the festival that evening. So check it out at their uh, website, e sorry, esff.ca. Regarding the comedy festival, really quick, mm -hmm. would you ever want to enter? I think they have an amateur competition as well. I'm hilarious, but I don't want to make everyone else look bad. Thanks. All right, we'll be right back after this. Hi, welcome back. We are with Charlene Milang and Daniel Foreman. They are with Groove Soldier Productions and the Edmonton Short Film Festival. Charlene is also one of our producers here, so I will be extra attentive to her during our interview. Did I tell you how good you look today? Well, thank you, Jen. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. It's a good start. <laughs> yeah. oh, yes. So okay. your film festival is coming up pretty quick. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, we started it in, in 2013. Okay. And one of the reasons we started is we found uh, for independent Alberta filmmakers, it's fairly challenging to get into uh, certain festivals around here. There's a lot of politics and there's a lot of, uh, it's like, almost any other kind of festival they would rather look outside than look what's in Alberta so we kind of seen a niche and we started developing that and it took off really really good uh, support from the community nice and th this year we are actually moving into the Royal Alberta Museum which from Exciting. Concordia College which is that's a much bigger thing. venue it is 350 people compared to 250 so oh goodness that's awesome and so there's a restriction, I hear, of 120 minutes you're allowed to show for your festival, but you've had so many submissions and so many amazing projects that you have 154 minutes. What is the plan there? Yeah, that's 154 minutes of just the very best. Uh, we've got over 300 minutes oh, of yikes. films submitted uh, that we've narrowed down. And uh, we have some adjudicators helping us. Uh, we have okay. four adjudicators, Zach Hogel, Gil Allen, uh, Stephanie Jones, and Sarah Hudson are all, uh, Stephanie Johnson and Sarah Hudson are our four adjudicators. So they have awesome. uh, done the, the big narrowing down for us to the 154. So we will be looking at trying to create a really entertaining program. Uh, that's, that's our goal now is to okay. create an entertaining program for audiences. So, so we'll be selecting from different categories and uh, then we've also got some significant prizes, uh, cash prizes for some of the top films. So awesome. the adjudicators will help us selecting those So as well. if somebody wanted to send you, say, a tip for getting their film in for sure, <laughs> where would they send that? <laughs> Do you have a website? <laughs> It's esff.ca, and it's uh, filmfest at esff.ca is the email. And probably the biggest tip I would say after programming for a few years is keep it short. Everybody, and I'm guilty of this as much as anybody, but you have an idea and all of a sudden you're going 10 minutes, 12 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and you start veering into feature film, or you're not a feature film and you're not a short film, and it's incredibly hard to right. program because short films, and well, any festival has a limited amount of time. So I, my biggest thing would be to say just, you know, keep it short as you can. So what would, what would be the timeline that you would kind of recommend? Under five minutes. Under five minutes? Under five minutes. It's very challenging to make a, a short film, any film, to, well to do it in that time. And it's, it's, a good, uh, it's a good opportunity for someone to learn. Nice. Did you ever watch five second films or five second shorts? Online, those are so funny. They're, yeah. they're humorous. Yeah, yeah, they're awesome. That that takes a lot of talent to make you laugh in five seconds. <laughs> yeah, some of them are so good. So, Groove Soldier Productions, did you guys start that for the film festival specifically, or do you do other productions as well? And how long has that been kicking around? Well, Dan actually started Groove Soldier Productions back in 2008. Oh. Okay. Uh, and then we started working together about four years ago. Nice. Uh, we were each working on a, on a web series project with uh, an Edmonton uh, producer. And I was acting, 
and Dan was uh, part of the crew, and nice. we we hit it off. We we enjoyed each other's company working on that project. Then Dan was uh, taking a main course at Fava that oh, year. Oh, great program! And. Uh, so I said, would you need any actors? And he said, if I'm making a film, 99% <laughs> chance I'm going to need actors. So I said, keep me in mind. Uh, we started working together on that. And, and he said, uh, I need a house. And I said, I can get you a house. I need a car. I can get you a car. He said, you're a producer. I said, I am. <laughs> and I am. Yeah. So then it's so was, easy to be a producer. That's oh, it. Just a yeah. house and a car. Yeah, just a house and a car. <laughs> And food. food. And <laughs> oh, food, yeah, yeah. That'll yeah. Win and actors. Heart. And <laughs> oh, fabulous. And so what is Group Soldier Productions working on now? Uh, right now we've got a, a couple of projects. Uh, we have a short zombie film that we are doing. Excellent. Which is a lot of fun. It's uh, fairly satirical, but uh, we wanted a, kind of a different angle. And that's going to be at the Edmonton Short Film Festival. And then the big project that we're working on is called Raven Steals Light, which is uh, based on a Haida myth. And uh, I don't know if you know of Haida. Haida Gawaii, it's way in uh, the Queen, Queen Charlotte Islands in BC. And uh, we're doing live action at the beginning, then with a big chunk of animation, and then live action at the end. Oh, interesting. Yeah, oh, that sounds really fun. Animation is a lot of work. <laughs> a lot of work. A lot of time. A lot more than we anticipated. Oh, good learning project yeah. then. Absolutely. Gave us a new insight for the animated projects we're getting for the yeah. festival. Oh, Some excellent. Some really, really wonderful animations. Good. Bringing it back to the festival, so you've got one day, September 26th, coming up, and there seems to be a full day of activities. You have Michael, or sorry, Brian Michael Stoller in the morning doing a workshop, and what will he be? What will he be workshopping? Well, Mr. Stoller is a producer, director, actor, slash Hollywood star, and he uh, is from Canada originally. He mm -hmm. is also the author of Filmmaking for Dummies. Hmm. And he's had a number of feature films. He's won different awards across uh, across the states, and also uh, one of his films, not The Amazing Wizard of Oz, First but Dog. First Dog, uh, has over 500,000 rentals. Awesome. Uh, so he, he's he's got some credibility, and he's coming to teach filmmakers uh, both the independent side of filmmaking, but also about the commercial side and you know being successful in Hollywood. So fabulous. Whoever submitted a film got a free ticket which includes lunch at El Cortez. And we also have that opportunity available for anyone for $25 for a ticket. That includes lunch, and you get a filmmaking masterclass with Brian Michael Stoller. Fantastic. And I'm imagining you go to the website, esff.ca, in order to get more information on that. So I want to thank you guys so much for coming on the show. And we look forward to seeing the festival on September 26th. And thank you again. Thank you so much. We'll be right back. Thank you, Jennifer. Thanks. Another awesome arts talk show coming to an end. It goes by so quick. Too quickly. Yeah, I want to thank my guest, Janice McDonald. Make sure that uh, you get out and look for the Randy Craig Mysteries series. Fantastic book series written locally and all using local locations. And I want to thank our magnanimous producer, Charlene, and her partner, Daniel, for the Edmonton Short Film Festival for being my guest today. That was a big word you just used. Yeah, well, she must think that I'm her favorite if I got to interview her. Uh, well, possibly. Uh, coming up next month. Yes, who's on our show? We have local comedian Ben Pruel, who, by the way, is one of the comedians that will be performing at the Edmonton Comedy Festival, so I'm Bye. glad that he will be on in October. We also have Terry P. Daly, who is a multimedia visual artist. I guess he's a sculptor, does clay, watercolors, so he should be a really interesting guest to have I on. I hope he brings some of his stuff. It would be nice to see some of the work that he's done, for sure. Excellent. And I get jokes sometimes, so I'm looking forward to hearing uh, Ben when he gets here, too. Maybe we can have Ben do a quick, short little segment for us. Yes. So if you want to be a guest on our show or you have an event that you would like us to discuss on our show, please email us at artstalkedmonton at gmail.com. And you can also go to our website, artstalktv.com, to watch old episodes, check mm -hmm. out the news. You can follow us on Twitter at artstalkedm. And, or you can follow myself at generous 2 And Bill, what's your Twitter account? At Celtic Rain. Excellent. So, and that's good that you actually brought that, brought that up in regards to going to the website. So if you haven't had a chance to see the previous episodes, go to the mm -hmm. website. They're there. You can watch them and uh, see who our previous guests were and, and what we were promoting and talking about. Mm -hmm. That's what Arts Talk is all about, promoting local art and local artists within our community. 
and we hope to have you on our show. You bet. Thank you so much for watching. It's been another edition of Art Stock. We'll see you next time.